Good to be back, chaps. Yes, quite a while, hasn't it? Yeah. It has. Are we out of touch? We have been probably, I, but we have been busy, mind, haven't we? We did the been extremely busy. The Euros and everything. The Euros, so. everything around the Euros. But I tell you, what else he's back. Our good friends at Manscaped. Heroes, they are. Yeah. Bloody heroes. heroes. The, yes, the leaders in men's grooming are uh, supporting us once again. And they're back with the 4.0. It sounds... It sounds good, doesn't it? It sounds incredible. It sounds as though you could cut the lawn with it. Yeah. Right? Remind your fucking balls. Sort your package out with the Manscaped 4.0 performance package. Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah! <laughs> I wasn't expecting no, that. No, then. no, I don't <laughs> mind. <care. laughs> That's what <laughs> Manscaped does. <laughs> 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 yes, you can join the two million other men. That's four million pristine testicles, that. Two million it Well men. worked out. Yeah. Well, Is yours well, pristine? Oh, well, no, because I lost it, didn't I? No, oh, you did. I lost it. I left it in one of hotels when we were doing a doing a podcast. So oh, yeah. Colin, the caretaker, uh, Premier in Profelli. He's looking magnificent. He's got home. He's Julie? Julie? He didn't really, he didn't realise how lucky a day he had, does he? Yeah. Cop for this, Julie. You know what? Jesus. <laughs> He could have found some in his wallet with 300 quid in, but it's for no, your man's game. my man's Loads of hairs. He found my man's game. But you can join the over 2 million and the 4 million testicles by going to www.manscape.com, getting on the performance package and putting in the code COSH20. Do you know what the performance package comes with? There it is in the little bag. I'll show you now, Chrissy. It comes with the Lawnmower 4.0 Precision Engineering. Yes, to give that clinical cut around the testicles. No nips. No cuts. Yes, she smooth. is. You can just go wild on the nuggets with that. Oh, I'm glad you've... There's a bit of debris on the... I'm glad, uh... you, I'm glad you've left them airs on there for us, <laughs> Matthew. Very much appreciated. An easy ride. You can just go wild up on the nuts. An easy ride from the gooch to the shaft. It is a comfortable shaft. it shave. all off. No. Have you, who's been using that? <laughs> Look at the state of that there. Not only... Comes in handy, by the way. You get... You get the weed like whacker, today. which is for the nose and, yeah. the, and the lug holes. It works on mine, so it'll work on it'll anything. Work on anything. Try it and test it. And then once you've done that, there's the formula formulas. Is that mm -hmm. the, the um, deodorant? It the does come in handy. Yes, the crop preserver, ball deodorant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the crop reviver, ball toner. So, and two free gifts come with it as well. That's your box of shorts and your little bag. But yes, get your twenty percent off. When you go to www.manscape.com and put in the code COSH20. Fill your box. Don't leave for it. Good? Yeah, all good. Nicky Hunt, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. Thanks but for joining us. Pleasure for me, this. Pleasure for me. I've been yeah. wanting to do this for quite a long time. Chat's quite a long time. Been wanting to You've do been this. wanting to do Come on with us, fucking idiot. Yeah, come on with you, fucking idiot. <laughs> 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 fucking correct. <laughs> this is like the ultimate for me. For me personally, this is the ultimate. So you've watched a few, and oh yeah, I watched a few. Yeah, I watched a few. Yeah, Stephen Bywater, I watched him. It's not out yet. Out yet. <laughs> oh, <is it? laughs> you will though when it comes out. Oh yeah, when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's because we were talking about it before. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh no, good? yeah. I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah very well. Yeah, enjoying me uh, bit of golfing at the minute, and then yeah. Um, start a start a proper job. Well, I say proper job in September at Bolton School. So very looking forward to that. So you start, you're half still playing a little bit though. Aren't you? I'm half still playing at Ashton United. Yeah, with my mate. He's the manager. I'm doing all the first team coaching. Uh, I'm registered as a player, but I think personally, I'll, I'll be playing about five games this season, five or ten games if I can. But I keep myself fit. I keep myself trim and that, and then lockdown belly. Always catch up with you. See, I know you don't tell me about that. <laughs> don't you tell me at all. So what are you doing at school? Uh, taking their under 15s. Right. Bolton school under 15s. Uh, three days a week. Uh, well, Monday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday mornings. We have a game every Saturday morning. Uh, and then I'll take training Wednesday and Thursday uh, after school, obviously. And then hopefully with a view to you know, carry on progressing it and see if I can take maybe the, the 11s and 12s maybe on like a Monday or Tuesday. I don't just want to be there for three days. I want to yeah. be there for, no, five you days a week. You keep your hand in football. Can. You're not like when you... 
you're not caretaker or something when you said you got a job at school. <laughs> Imagine, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got a full, I brought keys with me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they've got a lovely setup there, by oh, the way. Oh, they've got a lovely setup. Nice pool and that, which you're free, free to use, free gym. Oh. It's like uh, it's like David Lloyd's, but it's, uh, it's, 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 it's nice, to be fair. Is it really just a nice. public school? Well, public, no, private school. Private. Right. Yeah, private school, but they've got all they've the the massive on football, rugby and cricket. They're not really so massive on all the other all the other sports, but for me that's great. I, yeah, I, bit, I, they're getting I picked I, up now, aren't they? Yeah. I hope off offstead of watching. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. yeah, I get them up to outstanding, they're only good at the minute, so <laughs> they're gonna be outstanding. <laughs> Would you like to win the coaching and all that then? Yes, yeah, that's my next step. I've done all my badge well, I've done my uh, B and A. Um, just need to do the pro license, but it's ten grand. Uh, I'm sure, you can help me out with that pack if you can. Well, we're not fucking paying that much. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna pay you, but you said how much you wanted to come on, so you, you just fuck your feet up. <laughs> <laughs> you all was you all fucking yeah. barbell. <laughs> Shit, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. What is it, thirty quid? Thirty quid? I had four pints on me. That's all right, thirty quid. No, I've but got yeah. your third biggest name to come out of West Horton. After, After who? Robert Shaw. Fucking hell, Robert Shaw. Oscar, Oscar nominated Jaws. Bloody Weatherspoons is named after him. In West Orton? Yeah, he's is from West Is it called the Robert Shaw Weatherspoons? Yeah. Never fucking knew that. I'm saying that, I'm, I'm always like that when I, when I walk in. <laughs> <laughs> so Franny right. Lee. Apparently oh, yeah, Franny Lee. World Cup winner, you've got to give him that one. I'll give him that. I'll take, yeah. I'll take second. I'll fuck Robert Shaw off. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Jaws? <laughs> <laughs> fucking shit. Yeah. It's not even a real shark. It's a plastic, it's plastic shark. <laughs> 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 are you not? Oh, you're not rich, aren't you? Not Orton. Yeah. I thought you were going to throw yourself in because I know it's got I, second most. Oh famous. yeah, yeah. No, no. I found friendly afterwards, uh, so I added him in. Oh, you're an Orich lad, are you? Yeah, Orich. Yeah. yeah. So go on. What, what number are you in Orich? Fucking number <laughs> one. There's no <laughs> fucking number one. Orich. He's like, had <laughs> that out of fucking post, man. <laughs> Milkman's in at number three <laughs> for his services to Orich. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, they're still singing the song. We all want a team in Nicky Hunt. Yeah, I believe so, yeah, yeah. Um, I went, when did I go? A couple of years ago, I went and I did the half-time draw and that, and they, was, they were, you know, under the scoreboard end. The, uh, the what do you call them? The mad lot, I'd call them. The, yeah. the true diehards that are all under the scoreboard, you know, in, in that corner. And they were all, they were all singing uh, Nicky Hunt's song, which is great, great for me, obviously. It's great. Um, it's great to listen to, but yeah. Were you a Bolton fan? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at Burnham Park when I was a kid with my dad and my uncle. We used to go all the time in Great Lever End. We couldn't afford. Uh, was it Manny? No, Manny Road. What was the opposite Manny Road where they all the posh posh people sat? I can't remember what stand it was. Couldn't Should afford be looking at you, really. You know, yeah, yeah. I couldn't afford. Another Bolton fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Couldn't afford them seats, so we were Great Lever green seats behind goal. Yeah. You just go to a little soccer school before it. It's still there, actually. If you go on the St. Peter's Way on the left, it's like yeah, an astroturf. Yeah. We used to go there, play uh, from like nine o'clock in the morning till like one o'clock in the afternoon, have a McDonald's for lunch and then go and watch the game. So we used to train all, all morning on oh, no, like, like fun, like skills and stuff. And then there's an indoor bit as well. Um, used to go in there if it's if it pissing down outside. Used to go in there and then you go and watch the game. And yeah. my mum used to work there. And my nan used to work at Burnham Park, so I used to go in, get free coke or get free free little not coke coke like <laughs> diet coke. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. uh, and then you know, and then uh, go up there and then I used to go, uh, leave with my mum at the end of uh, the end of the evening about seven o'clock. So, so it, was it must good. have been a, a proud moment when you signed on and you thought. Yeah, even I mean, even as a as a young lad. Yeah, I mean, I, I was at Man U till I was I was at Man United from ten till I think ten till fifteen or ten till fourteen, fifteen maybe, and then signed at Bolton under Martin Dobson. Uh, he's not bless him, he's not here no more. Uh, but he he you know he signed me, uh, and then yeah, uh, graduated from there, and then signed my first professional contract at seventeen. Uh, yeah, fantastic for me that great. It was in the first team when you. When oh, I was 17. Doing your IT. So when I, Kevin Nolan had just broke through. He was like a year and a half. Was he? Well, he, he'll kill me for saying this. I don't even know how old he is. I'll, I'll say two years old. He'll probably come out and say I'm about, he's about eight months old, don't he? But <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, Kevin Nolan, he was there. He just broke through. Uh, and then we had like Per Franson, Michael Johansson, uh, Jussi Askeline, and he was goalkeeper. Goodney Bergson was there, big Icelandic centre half. Uh, there was loads, Dean Oldsworth was there, Michael Ricketts was there, like people that, the players that had done a lot in the, a lot in the game, Dino had been a member of the crazy gang, hadn't he? Yeah. And he, uh, he was, he was, cra he was, well, he was crazy. Yeah. He was, he was it, mm, milder than Vinnie Jones, I'd say, but still, 
Still a bit still crazy. A bit oh, still a bit bonkers, yeah. But he had a slip back case. I was always jealous of his slip back case. And his headband as well. I was always jealous of his fucking headband. We're in headband. <laughs> always jealous. Oh, he had headband training. It was slick, wasn't it? I mean, oh, slick, yeah. slick. Like brill cream slick. Yeah. 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 Almost a bit creepy slick though at the same time. Well, a, bit sleazy. Sleazy. Like, a bit sleazy. Yeah. A bit. Like the owner of Blue Car. Yes. Yeah, you left it running. I ain't ever. He's not the owner either, it's his missus. Okay, at least he's still there, pal. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, fucking oh, hell. That was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Go, oh my god, imagine that. Sorry, love your car, I've been nicked. <laughs> What's happened? Well, I left well, nothing, yeah. <laughs> nothing, no, no, it was left door open as well. You just fucked my head and fucked up. Oh, <laughs> so, do you see in the, those, the, the, the established pros that were there by the way, already? That is cutting, by the way, because if she watches that, I'm not <laughs> leaving I'm, that. I'm, I'm I'm that. <laughs> Sorry, love, I left the car running. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, fucking Do they use you in them? Um, Established pros, uh, Oldsworth. Yes and no. I mean, back then, you now you can't get away with anything, can no. you? You know, like as a youth team player, you you don't even clean boots and stuff like that. But we had to clean the toilets, clean the showers, clean the boots, uh, bibs, cones, BBC we used to call it bibs, balls, bibs, cones. That was like one of the jobs, and then it was like cleaning boots was the other job, dressing room the other job, uh, taking the kit into the kit room the other job, putting the kit out. Do you know what I mean? Helping the kit man and stuff in the morning. But now you don't get away with any of that. But to be fair, Dino, uh, Michael Ricketts, Gudney Bergson, Perfran, Simon Charlton was there. Really, really good pros. And they, they guided you along, to be fair. So we didn't really get a tough time of it. But uh, I can imagine maybe the you know five years pre pre predecessors to us would be, they would be literally be in the shower, stick. getting, you know what I mean? Like getting stuff thrown at them and stuff like that, heads down toilets and stuff like that, just as initiation and stuff. But it's I all think, kind of I don't think, I don't think it's good how it is now. I think, nah. that, I think that were good. Yeah. I'm not, not putting, maybe not putting some oh, that's head a bit down. Too <laughs> no, but, yeah, yeah, not no, putting some head down to shit too much. I mean, that's a little bit too far, <laughs> but all that sort of stuff, your jobs and all that, we speak about it all the time, don't we? Yeah. I think met. you got off lightly. Uh, yeah, but no, initiations. just initiations. <laughs> there were initiations, yeah. yeah. There, were, there were songs and stuff like that. There was uh, stuff that you had to do. I'm not going to go into graphic detail and stuff, but there was, you know, that it, it, it was embarrassing for some people. If you weren't, you know, if you weren't, how do I word this? If you weren't at one with yourself, like, I'm not mean getting naked or anything like that. I'm just mean being put in a situation where everyone's there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you're in a you're 16, 17 year old. Swim. Yeah. And it's like, this is it. This is it for you, basically. And how are you? Either, Oh, I was fine. Don't worry about me. I've got a great singing voice. I'm fucking done. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I'm fucking fine. <laughs> so yeah, but you know, a few of them sunk and it, it didn't bode well. It, it shouldn't have done, but it didn't bode well for them because they didn't earn the respect that, oh, it took, sorry, it took longer to earn the respect to the pros than it should have done. Uh, than it would have done if, if you just smashed it first off. But yeah. Not everyone can do that. No. Do you know what I mean? I'm I still can't do it now. I hate, I hate it now. Really? Pretty serious, yeah. Anything like that. Just I'd, in front of yeah. on, under the spotlight. Yeah. yeah. The thing is though with it, you know, if you just go, they're not expecting you to be fucking Tom Jones. Oh no, that's no. the stupid no. thing you know about I mean? it. If yeah. you just go, right, and you just fucking give it your bollocks. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you sound like fucking two fighting cats. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Just go and give it your bollocks. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll get more honestly. You learn more respect doing that than than not doing it. At yeah. All. Like, I still like I, I'm Ashton United now, and there's still even previously in the couple of two three years previous to this. There was lads that, you know, did initiations on uh, away games, coming back on team coaches that just refused to do it. And they'd say, oh, we'll pay 50 quid or pay 100 quid or 200 quid. And we're like, yeah. It's not about that, on, It's it? not about that. Yeah. On the way back from the away game, got a few beers on the, yeah. on the coach and that. Everyone just wants to hear you and make a tip <laughs> yourself, basically. Do you know what I mean? Even if you can't sing, mm. but some lads are just, they're just still now to this day, point blank refused. Yeah. It's mad the one that people would, be willing to pay that much money just yeah to, just to not not sit just just 30, 30 seconds 30 of a song, song yeah. and you, or, or 200 quid yeah do you know what I mean and they'll just <laughs> take now, a laugh yeah yeah, do it now, yeah. yeah probably <laughs> it's mad honestly I don't know how they do unless it unless I've got a if I had a drink maybe different yeah. but 
said, fuck, mate. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I imagine going to a Friday night in an hotel. I know, that's the worst, yeah. though. You oh, just finish no, your pasta yeah. and you get the yeah, tap on the glass. The tap on the glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You know it's coming. Cool. Like, eating your pasta as well, because you know it's coming, man. Like. <laughs> you want a few nights out in Warrington? Right? Yes. Uh, fucking hell, yeah. We went out, went out. The first ever one was in Warrington Town Centre when Mr. Smith was there. I don't know if any of you know it. It's like no. a nightclub called Mr. Smith. So uh, I think we were only 16, what were we, 17, 18? Must have been 17, 18. So he gets out, goes into this uh, Yates's bar or Revolution bar, and like uh, all lads are there. Chris Downey, me, uh, Danny Flanagan, all Irish lads are there. Um, Chris Williams, goalkeeper. You all got your best gear on and all. Oh, yeah. well, like, yeah, like kickers to the max. Like, <laughs> honestly, we had, what, you know what I mean? Like, proper, because we were only like 16, we should have Ben Sherman. Oh, Ben Sherman's were there. Yeah. Ben Sherman's were there. <laughs> Levi Jeans and then uh, kickers on it. But, you had to because we were so a lot of us were young, like a lot of us were only 16, 17, and to, they didn't check IDs in no. them days. You just, if you looked old enough, it's like a pub, if you looked old enough, yeah. you got served. You got basically. a beard, you fly. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Right. You, you act positive and you act, you act all big, Billy Big Time, you'll get in. But if you're like shitting yourself, you know, a couple of lads didn't get in, so they had to go back to fucking hotel over at River. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, gets in this bar, Yates's and that. So. There's uh we're all we're all dancing, getting on. Uh, we uh, we used to have um, Smirnoff Ice and Blue Wicked in a pint glass. Fuck knows what it's called, but it's lethal. It sounds it's like, delightful. Oh, it's loopy juice. Like you're just in a pint glass, you're just necking them because it tastes like pop until your teeth start falling out about twelve o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> that much fucking sugar in your mouth. But anyway, so we get to this uh, Yates's bar, and there's there's this um, uh, lady. I call her lady, and her daughter. They were out. And she gets on dance floor and the mum just starts taking a top off on dance floor. And we're 16, 17, 18, lads. Oh, like, okay. I bet there was some we're like, just, the... Pints were down, like, we just sat there like, ah, what's going on here? And then she brought her mate over, she took her top off, so just her bras on the dance floor, you know, knocking her about. <laughs> we're like, ah, fucking hell, give me another fucking blue wick in the sort of bag, yeah, I'll fucking stay here. So anyway, uh, gets to the end of the night and then uh, a few of the lads, uh, we all went back to the hotel. And then a few of the lads came back uh, late doors with this mum. Mum? Yeah, with the mum. <laughs> with friend? the mum. Uh, no, a friend no, weren't daughter, there. No. It, no, no, I wish a daughter, yeah. <laughs> I wish the, a mum. So he gets back in and I believe uh, from the stories that I got told, uh, she was quite a wild one. Uh, and it led to certain, certain, certain things. And then she just left in the morning. And then about uh, five days later, we got like an email to football club saying... Um, what did it say now? Like, sit, call her Jackie. I don't know her name. Jackie, Jackie's uh, been in touch and said she had a fantastic night with the, <laughs> with the old lads. The, the, the lads were pretty, like, you know, a credit to Bolton Wonders. <laughs> a, a credit to Bolton Wonders. Uh, you should be really proud of them. And they, they behaved themselves like, uh, you know, like, uh, on the, they were on the best behaviour all night. I can't, and I can't, uh, I can't thank you enough. And we were like, fucking yeah! <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Oh my God. She's got to to performance stats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, right back. Nicky, seven Nicky got a seven. <laughs> uh, yeah, keeper. Splatting with his ears. <laughs> Working it with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Oh, mate, honestly. That's like, a, ple a pleasure to have you. A pleasure to have them lads. That's they in were the, fantastic. That's so something in my top five story <laughs> that, that we've ever had on. Fantastic, yeah. So, like, I mean, the lads are like, well, like you said, like 16, 17, 18. Oh, yeah. So young lads and uh, how old's Jackie? <laughs> now, well, then. <laughs> then. then. She's got a daughter oh, she, with her. She was a good 50-year-old then. Don't worry about that, Jackie. All oh, right. Oh, so yeah, she's, she's, good 50 she's taking the lads under her wing. Oh, well, yeah. She, I, think she, yeah I think she looked after them. Let's just say yeah. she looked after them. What a hero. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah. Jackie? Yeah. The, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we need Jack, more Jackies in this world, don't we? Oh, I wonder if she told her daughter, oh, I wrote a letter to the club. I, 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 got, I got the word. I, be, I well behave. Oh, Jesus. That's sensational. Oh, mate. It was, like, unheard of. Unheard so did, of the, did, did the youth team manager, like, give you all a pat on the back? Or? Well, no, no it was Chris Sully at the time, and um, I, don't, I, I actually don't know what happened. Um, I don't know what happened after that. I seriously don't know what happened. But we didn't get any disciplinary action or anything like that because it was a an organised team night out. Do you know, it was complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get him bothered for being fucking polite guys, <laughs> and putting a couple of good performances <laughs> in. All inclusive. It was. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Oh, Jackie. Oh. God bless you, Jackie. God bless you, Jackie. God bless I don't even know if that were your name, but God bless you. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I bet, I, bet that was some, I bet that was some fucking bus up Monday morning. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Turn that music down. I don't know everything that happened. That's so how, how long after you'd um, signed did Big Sam take over? He was already there. Right, so... He, were, he, he, uh, he must have signed in 90. I went watching the playoff final when they beat Preston 4-1. Four, four, yep. I went watching that and I think I was 17 then. Right. Or 16. So that must have been... Wait, 2000 or 2001? I'm not sure of the date. Yeah, but he'd already been, been, yeah, he'd already been there a couple of years. I think he took over from with Colin Todd, who he took over yeah. from. Yeah, he'd already been there a couple of years. Um, and he, he was the one that gave me pro contract, to be fair. Well, he gave um, Chris Sully there. So do you remember, because you, you you made your debut like quite a lot before you got into the first team. Yeah, probably, 17 I made my debut. It was it against Kevin Phillips, actually. Um, he's a good, good mate. Well, good mate of mine. He's played with him at Birmingham City. Uh, and he was at Sunderland at the time. Uh, it was at the Reebok Stadium. I, I, I started, oh no, I did it before that. I came on for Colin Hendry. Yeah. At the last game of the season at Sheffield United at the Reebok. That was the, the season when we went to beat Preston in the playoff final. That. So you were 17 then? Yeah. Uh, and then we, uh, it was, I think I played at 18 against Sunderland against Kevin Davis, and then I made my Premier League debut at 19. So if you got into your Premier League debut, played against Giggs first half, Ronaldo second half? It's not a bad debut, is it? No, right? no, no. Oh, no. Yeah. This is when you lose 4 0. <laughs> <laughs> and gigs good too. And Ronaldo won and set three up. up yeah. <laughs> no, but honestly, it's surreal. Like, the, we went through the, the match day on the, the Friday. We did, like, the, you know, when he picks the team, 11 v 11. And I, I was just twiddling my thumbs because I'd done well pre season. We'd been, like, to Austria or Portugal somewhere pre season. Done well in, like, three games. Started quite two, I think, out of the three. And I didn't think anything of it. I just thought, I'm buzzing to be around the first team. Got loads of players here, like loads of good players. Anti Barnes was a right back. Just let Bernard Mende go. And I was thinking, I never thought to myself that I might be the next in line sort yeah. of thing. So it gets to Friday, it comes to the the, um, the team shape and that. And I'm thinking, mm, all right, then, yeah, I'll, I'm happy just setting up in... Second eleven, you know, when he names team and all rest. I might, I might be on bench. Yeah, I might be on bench. I might, yeah, Old Trafford and all that. So he's, he's named it to you. He says, right, uh, Yussi, uh, Charlton, no, Yussi Gardner, uh, Laville and Gotti, Hunt. And I've gone. So I've looked at Kevin Nolan, he's gone, what? Well, so I've gone, fuck it, all right, then. But I'm spinning it right back position. Then, then he named fucking like, we had a, a Kocha, Franson, uh, Nolan, Jorke, Davis, and um, I can't remember who it was on right wing. Anyway, so we did this 11 v 11 for about half an hour. Gets in, sign changing him. I just remember looking at Kev, I said, he said, you're fucking on it, aren't you? You'll be on it tomorrow, you'll be on it tomorrow. I said, fucking hell, will I? I'll be so Kev's on only two years older than you, but it, he's been yeah. in the team. He's been, he, he broke through the previous year. Yeah. I think he played like 20 games or something the previous year. And he was like the, the new prodigy. Yeah. You know, like, because he's... Um, he were only, yeah, he was seven, I think he was 17 when he broke through and then 18 when he started playing a few games and then 20 when he actually broke through mm. and played 20, 25 games. And and I, little did I know, I was on that journey to be the next one after him, yeah. sort of thing. So yeah, we get to uh, Devere White's hotel on the Saturday, twelve o'clock. And but the fans could come in for a drink, like it it was that like mad. Relaxed. Yeah, it was. So fans are all having a bevy at the, the the bar while we just had our pre match and just sitting down. They're all coming over to us, looking forward to today, lads. Yeah, obviously they don't. They didn't know the team. They didn't know me really. Yeah, they didn't know the team. Speaking to all the, the you know the, the lads that have been playing. You think that helped you? I think it. I you know, like, I mean, you're like you're probably more relaxed than if you just all sat in a room and all the experienced lads are just sat normal. And yeah, you're, and you're there like, oh my fucking god. What's yeah, here? what's going? Yeah, it probably did actually. For, yeah, for, yeah, but they didn't necessarily came over to me. They, you know, shook it, shook everyone's hand and that, and had a pint and that. But yeah, it probably did. To be fair, back it probably it probably made me feel a bit more involved in the team than maybe I would have done if we'd have just been in like a room like this eating food, mm. do you know what I mean? Having a glass of water, orange juice or whatever it is. Yeah, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been as formal. It probably, yeah. it probably did chill me out. It's still a bit. massive thing, isn't it? For making your Premier League debut at mm. Old Trafford. Yeah. Y y y it's going to take a lot to ease them nerves, I mm. imagine. Oh well, yeah, you know. Uh, I Knowing remember... that you've got gigs to start off with. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, we went through the, uh, the pre-match analysis at like uh, uh, before we left the, the ground. It was like at 11 o'clock or like half 11 and you put their team up, their predictive team and you're thinking fucking Ferdinand, 
um, Giggs, Scholes, Keane, uh, who's on the right that day. Van Nistelrooy up top, uh, and you're thinking, fuck, you know. Right. But there's all this hype about Ronaldo. Like, he signed four days before or something like that, three days before, like this 18-year-old, goofy kid, slick back hair, acne. So in a way, you're thinking, get him on. Yeah. I'd rather have Giggs in there. I'd Ronaldo over yeah. <laughs> At the time. <laughs> yeah. Let's yeah, at the, the time, Giggs had just, yeah, he probably, I think he just scored about 25 goals a season before or something like that. And he was in his proper prime, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? But yeah, he, he just, it, it, it's mad. People say like, oh, you must have been, yeah, I was nervous in that. But when you step, when that whistle goes, you'll know. When that whistle goes, and you'll know, you'll all know. You just. Feels not. <laughs> you just focus everything out. Like, honestly, you just, it, you just zone out. You just zone into your job. And. I don't know, people say, oh, Old Trafford must have been an electric atmosphere. It actually wasn't an electric atmosphere until he came on, Ronaldo. It, they, it, were, it weren't deathly silent, don't get me wrong, but it was 1-0. And they, they'd they be expecting to batter Bolton, like opening game of the season. They, they want to be 3 4 nil up the first half, mm. but they weren't. It was quite a close game sort of thing. We had a couple of chances, they had a couple of chances, scored a goal. And then 71 minutes, I think it was, and then it just erupted with, with this... Uh, with this Ronaldo guy this coming spot up. little Portuguese bastard. Yeah, and he was he was as skinny as me, but wow, he, he was fucking quicker than me. <laughs> <laughs> I went far up with you when I, when I played against you, I went fucking far off. Honestly, he was, yeah, he was something else. Even in that little 20 minute glimpse, he was, he had something that I, that no one had seen for a, many, many years sort mm. of thing. It what was, was uh, Maladice like before the game were you? you know, uh, with, he, he was, he was, he, man management, he was fantastic, but he, he left pre pre game to like Phil Brown or his first team coach. And do you know what I mean? Or the the other the other people in the dressing room. He he weren't he, he spoke to me the day before. He said, Look, just go out and enjoy yourself, you know, just just use it as a you know stepping stone for your career, which was great, I thought, and it eased me. But he never he never pulled me to one side before the first game because I think it, it I don't know whether whether he knew that that I would be like that or it, it was strange. But Phil Brown, you know, uh, took me to one side and said, "Just go out and enjoy yourself. Like you're in, you're in the biggest stage now. Just go out and enjoy yourself." And then Paul Durkin, the little ginger referee, he was the referee that day. And to be fair, it was in Old Trafford Tunnel, and that's daunting because you can just see seventy thousand people straight out. And he's come up when we're lining up. He's come up, shook me hand, and said, "Have a great game today." And I thought. What referee really? does that? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. referee does that like anymore? Because he must have knew that he's my debut again. And he, you know, during the game, he'd give me the odd, you know, thumbs up and that. <laughs> doing well. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Come on. Do, yeah, seriously. Jackie's husband. Sorry, Jackie's husband. Sorry, Jackie. Sorry, Jackie. Sorry, You want a lad looked after my sister, Jackie <laughs> Warrington. <laughs> She was, ginger. she was ginger, I think I remember she was ginger. Ginger Jackie. Well, it's changed now. Did you see that? Was it Kevin? One of them fucking gone blew a kiss at ball or something, he? Who did? Oh, the refs? Kevin Stroud, would it be? Possibly, oh, yeah. Come out the tunnel, obviously the cameras are on him. He's gone. <sighs> oh, oh put the ball mate. in his arm. Yeah, no. We had, the ref, to be fair, we'll go back to, quickly go back to referees. We had like Uriah Rennie, like, didn't take no shit. Great yeah. referee. Paul Durkin. David Ellery, he was there, I think, and um, who was the, Mark Clattenburg. They just didn't take any. Sh I know he was a bit chauvinistic and stuff, but they didn't take any shit from him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you can have a bit of crack but with him. Of course man. you can, yeah. You can have a bit of banter with him. Like, do you know what I mean? Fuck, you fucking wind me up, and they'll say, "Look, you're having a shitter." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They'll give <laughs> it you. Fucking traps you. Yeah, you, you're having a shitter. Exactly. And they'll I give just it you. like that. Yeah, they'll give it you back as, as much as you yeah. give it them. But now you can't do that. Obviously, with yeah. all the cameras, you can't say you can't yeah. say boo to a goose now. How did you feel after that game at Old Trafford? Because yeah, you've lost four 0 You know, Ronaldo and Giggs, but you you're part of the part of the team now, Premier League. Yeah, you know, I I went home and I thought, you know, I spoke to spoke to my dad on the phone. He said, "Look, you did really well." And I spoke to lads after the game, and they were very complimentary. You know, for your first game, I know yeah. we lost four 0 but it weren't well. There's, I think. I don't think any goals are my fault, really. So, <laughs> so you just put you tap, pat yourself on the back and, and and just go again. But the second game, Blackburn Rovers at home, I had an absolute beast at home at the Reebok Stadium. Absolute beast I had. I think I was going to get brought off after. We ended up drawing the game 2 2. I, I could have scored in the first half, but then I just wilted away in the second half. And then I think the third game, Portsmouth away, he dropped me. Because I, I I was unproven at this level, and he just think he must have thought Blackburn at home, even though there's only twenty twenty six thousand there, 
you come and you, I need to take you out of the limelight a little, a little bit sort of thing. Did so he say got, anything to you or just? Uh, no, yeah, no, he, no, he did. He, he said, look, you, you know, the game against Blackburn was, you, you did well in your debut and then the second game you weren't, you weren't at it. Uh, so, you know, I was just, I was still on the bench. I was still, I was still on the bench, still, you know, like, okay. <laughs> Taking the gasp. <laughs> 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 so yeah, uh, and he took me back and it put Pompey away, but we got battered four 0 I think Teddy Sheringham scored two, and um, I can't remember who scored. So when you first, I mean, how did you get on against Blackburn? Two two. two, it was. two. So yeah. in your first three games of the season, you got the four, four nil, drawn two two, done four nil. But I didn't play the third game. So no, that... but I'm, it, might, it can't be five game fucking potted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus yeah. Christ! I oh, know that would be. Yeah. That would, yeah, that's it. Uh, I think you probably got, you probably went on, and I think the first ten games, I think we lost, lost five, won three, and drawn two or something like that. So it weren't the best start. Yeah. But we just, we just used to get with Sam. We used to get stronger and stronger, stronger the, the the longer the season went, and we used to get stronger and stronger, stronger. Did you like his uh, mid-season trips back then? Yeah, we had, a, we had, a, we had a fair few. Uh, we had a fair, we had a couple of Marbella ones, and we used to go to Dubai every February. <laughs> Every February, like in Tra training camp, training. Or... Tra well, yeah, training camp. <laughs> training camp. <laughs> Just for anybody who's listening on audio, like, it's not a fucking training <laughs> camp. It's far from a fucking training camp. Uh, so we used to go there every Fe every international break in February. We used to go there, um, and it, we we used to have some absolutely brilliant nights. That we used to tr we did used to train. We used to train either very early in the morning or really late at night, like nine o'clock at night. Do you know when the heat the heat was at its lowest or we'd be at, literally train at eight o'clock on the beach like um you know running or doing drills or doing football but the hotel we used to at used to have a little uh football pitch on the beach which was class like little little uh you know the little square six before nets is that is that just so we can justify it to the board that we'll take them to buy but there's a football pitch bang next to it <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> what it does and it's, and it's it's a, like with sand it's yeah. just sand and a couple of old it doubles, yeah. it doubles up the beach volleyball <laughs> 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 it just so happens it's right next to the pool bar just, just, just there as well yeah but no that's that's what we did every February and I remember one time went out I think it was one of my first trips to Dubai uh, Jeff Smith the postie postman we were on about posties before yeah. weren't we Postman, he uh, he was the only one that I'd ever been to the club that got rejected from getting into a club because he had them Nike, um, you know what, where he had your big toe and then it had all the oh, rest the of your riffs. toes oh, the with, the, with the Velcro over. Right, yeah. yeah. So he wore all them red ones out with some like tight G. He had the weirdest dress. He'll, ne he'll never forgive me saying this. The weirdest dress sense I've ever known in my fucking life, Jeff Smith. He was a postman, but he signed for Bolton. He, he was a good player. He had a wicked left foot. He went on to play for, thing, play for Chesterfield. He had, a, he, had a, he had quite a good career considering he'd come from non-league and come from, you know what I mean, being a postie. But he, he got to the club and the bouncer was like, nah, you ain't coming in. So he got what? a taxi. The club? Oh, the nightclub. The sorry. nightclub. Yeah, right. sorry. Oh, I thought oh, you were no, coming into Griffin game. Sorry, yeah. man, you're not coming yeah. in there for fuck's sake. Phil Brown was there. Nah, Jeff, <laughs> fucking out of there. <laughs> fucking no way. Uh, no, the nightclub in Dubai. Uh, so we'd all, we'd all, we were all were in there and he, he'd gone back and I think it took him about an hour he got a taxi all the way. We we stayed like not in downtown Dubai, like on the outskirts. So he got a taxi all the way back to change his shoes to come all the way back, and then he still couldn't get in with them shoes. He had so, I don't he had another pair of trainers. <laughs> he had another pair of trainers on. He had no pair of trainers. I wouldn't let him in. So he had to go back and get some proper proper brogues on, proper like you know granddad shoes on to get in the fucking nightclub. So he's been, he's been refused twice. twice. To be fair, fair play to him. <laughs> I think after the first... Double rejection. <laughs> definitely after the second time, I'm thinking, fuck this. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting in bed now. I'm getting a kebab. <laughs> it's, not, it's not worth it, this. Yeah. Every credit to him, Matt. Every, what yeah. a great lad he was. What a great Imagine lad. him getting in the second time and going, right, lads, finish up, we're getting <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> Minibus is out of sight. Sam and Phil Brown have a drink on the trips. Sam and Phil Brown... Uh, loved them trips because they they did the training and then it, for the rest of the day, the rest of the afternoon, it was just they did obviously they did what they want. So the Frankie De Torre was there one year, and he was uh, we was we was supposed to be training in the evening and having a night out the night before we went back home. I think this was a Friday. We were going back on the Sunday. We were supposed to have a night out on the Saturday. So it was round the pool in Royal Meridian in Dubai. And uh, there's, a pool, there. there's a pool bar, isn't there? Yeah. Um, so we was there and uh, Sam was talking to Frankie Dittori and we were all just like chilling before because we were training at like eight o'clock at night. 
So we, about four o'clock in the afternoon, we're all just like having a bit of a sunbathe and that. And um, Frankie's, uh, I think, who, who, who said something? It might have been Kevin Nolan said, Frankie, come on, lad. Get into the gaffer. We want to go out. We want to go out tonight. So he's, uh, Frankie the Tory said to Sam, Hey, Sam, oh, why are you not let the boys go out tonight? <laughs> so we were like, Come on, Frankie. 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 And then uh, Sam just gone. Do you lot want to go out tonight? And no one had said anything. So I think, I can't remember who, who, who per so It might have been like uh, Per France or something. He said, yeah, we do, Gaffer. He's gone, well, fucking get out tonight then. We've all gone, Way! straight into the pool, straight into the pool bar. Cocktails, 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 and then straight out that night. So I'll, I'll always thank Frankie DeSori for convincing, for convincing Sam Fun time, Frankie. Oh, my God. For convincing him to, to, to let us out a night early. And then obviously we went out the night after as well. That was, that was just uh, nailed on that. He, he would never say anything like that. Oh, it was class. And then there's another little quick story, Steve Howie. Used to play for uh, yeah. Newcastle Centre Round. We was in the we were going to Dubai and we was in the um, old uh, airport lounge. And Derek Niven, Scott lad, Scott Scottish lad, just signed with us. Uh, we was all having a, it, it, free drinks and that, so we all had a, a couple of beers and that. And Derek, we said, Steve, I said, Derek, what do you want? He said, oh, I'll just have a coke. Uh, he went, what? I'll just have a coke. I don't drink. Steve, I has gone. Sit down. So Derek sat down next to me. Said. You will never be a footballer if you don't have a fucking drink. <laughs> so Derek's gone, well, what do you want me to have then? And he's gone, what the fuck is that with a JD and Coke? So he had fucking JD and Coke. He had JD and Coke, he'd never drunk before. And he's like, he had a JD and Coke, all that flight and all the trip. And then as soon as he got back, he was not a raging an alcoholic. alcoholic. <laughs> no, he wasn't a raging <laughs> alcoholic. <laughs> He would, that's all he drank then. JD, every time he went out, JD and Coke, JD and Coke, but he never drank, he'd never drank before in his life. And Steve always said, you will never be a footballer if you don't fucking drink. And, and did he went, make it? He what? Did, did, did he have a good career? Oh yeah, he, I think he played about, yeah, he played about 100 league. He played for Chesterfield. The next time they met each other, it priory, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie! <laughs> <laughs> Our next duel. <laughs> Stevie! JD and Coke, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> It was like a drink though, Steve, bless you. Oh, just, you just, know. Just to be fair, because he was on that walk. We did a charity walk a couple of weeks ago. Oh, really? And we, we had 91 miles ahead of us and I've just asked for some water. And it's as if I'd shit in his shoe. He went, <laughs> what, what, are you do, what are you doing, son? Honestly, he takes, re he takes real offence to it. He takes <laughs> real offence yeah. to it, yeah. <laughs> he does, he takes real offence to it. Well, ever since that, that I've, uh, yeah. He was only there about six months though, Steve. But what a guy. Honestly, an absolute diamond of a Steve guy. Steve Howie. Oh, Steve Howie's a diamond of a guy, yeah. Absolute diamond. Yeah, he's good. Yeah. yeah, he's quite quiet. Yeah, but when he, oh, when he's had it, yeah. yeah, when he's had a, a couple of bevies and that, he's just like life and soul of power. Yeah. He's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Is that true about you, Peugeot three or six? Peugeot one or six. That I had uh, Peugeot, uh, my first ever car, seventeen Peugeot one or six Quicksilver, one point four injection. <laughs> And I had, my cousin, uh, he still does it now. He still does all the, you know, the sat navs and radio and speaker systems in cars and stuff. And uh, I got him to fit me a PS1 in the glove compartment. So I had a PS1 in the glove compartment. Oh, PlayStation. PlayStation 1 in the glove compartment. And then I had uh, an, a detachable TV screen right in the center of my um, dashboard uh, with all the wires underneath. And then they had uh, neon, I had four neon lights underneath my car. <laughs> You loved it though, didn't you? Oh my god, down West Orton, round Weatherspoon, <laughs> <laughs> like that, cruising, just sit sat outside, cruising. Anyone want a game? <laughs> <laughs> Throwing pad out the window, pad on the lead, pad on the lead. <laughs> all, all, all smokers out front, just put their window down. Like Anyone fancy a game? Who's your best it. player? You can be whatever team you want. <laughs> get in, send him in. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> it was class. Honestly, it was fucking genius. It was brilliant. I mean, every every lunch time um, at Exton, um, I used to go quickly go quickly go down my lunch in the thing and then go and sit in my car and just fucking start playing people <laughs> <laughs> on my own. Like, all fucking time. <laughs> on my own. <laughs> on my own. <laughs> all fucking time. Honestly, <laughs> fucking brilliant. It's, it's has anybody seen a Yeah, a bit car. It'd be, a bit car. It'd be about 70 minutes ago. They're not even bothering just yet. <laughs> Honestly. 
<laughs> dream days, then, <laughs> dream what were, days. Uh, what was Sam like then? What were... uh, he was the best manager I've ever worked under, uh, just purely because he, his man management skills were top, top draw. Like, he, 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 was, he was tactically very, very, very good, but I just thought he brought the best out of players. He knew how to get the best out of every single player he had. Like, we had, obviously, we had Jufi, we had, we had a, a varied, uh, you know, um, players and stuff, and you, you've just got to manage them. Because Jufi, obviously, when he was at Liverpool and stuff, uh, didn't really have the best of times, you know what I mean? And when he came to Bolton, he, he just knew how to manage him. Like, he knew he'd go out on a Wednesday or Thursday or even a Friday night before a game, but he knew when he turned up on a Saturday, he'd either create your two goals, assist your two goals, or score two goals, you know what I mean? He can be that type of player. He never really had an off game, no matter. But you've just got to man. You just got to take that. No other manager now would would ever do that. No other manager would say yeah. the the player would just be gone. He'd be transferred straight away. And, but uh, Sam had a knack of bringing out the best in every every player we had. So we spoke about Warnock though. I think Warnock's a bit like that. Mm -hmm. You know, with Tarat and stuff and other players of the similar. Would he let, would he, would he, would he let Jeff go out on a Friday night? He then? just he, what, what could you do? You can't unless you're physically at his front door saying. Hey, lad, you're not fucking coming out tonight. You're not going to Bolton tonight. You're not going to Manchester Panacea tonight. You can't do anything. As a manager, unless you unless you stood, literally stood outside his gates or stood outside his door, because you've just got to let him do what he's doing. And if he does, if he does have a shocker on a Saturday, then you disappoint yeah, him. Yeah. But if he doesn't, why? Like, if he's, I, I, I agree. Do you know I what think, I mean? I just think in Premier League, you can't, you, you're letting one of your star players do what he wants. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think I think maybe maybe he had a, couple, a few conversations during the season, just saying, look, you know, if you do get uh, seen out on, because he, he had spies everywhere, he had, not spies, but he had people that knew him, that that would Informing, be out in Bolton, yeah. that'd be out in Manchester, that'd be out in Wigan, just say, look, if you see anyone out on a Thursday or Friday night, just let me know, and I'm sure Jufi had been disciplined many times for that. Do you know what I mean? But on the times that he didn't. He was he was brilliant for us. Honestly, he was. Yeah, he was quite like that. Like, yeah, you just let your player do what he needs to do to be right on a Saturday. Yeah, yeah. but it only comes a problem if he starts having a shitter. That's the thing. But then he disciplined him. Then he he fine him two weeks' wages and won't play him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's, it's it, more the other lads in it. The other yes. lads are like fuck me. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. Bus we're busting his balls. We're getting yeah. everything right. Yeah, and that fuck is in Panacea Friday night. Yeah, <laughs> but if he if he heard that he was in Panacea on Friday, he won't play on a Saturday. Do you know what right. I mean? If he heard he was in wherever on a Thursday, he wouldn't play on a Saturday. Yeah. Would that would that affect the other lads? He gets away with fucking murder. But if he wins them the game, well, yeah, yeah, the, it, it was a toss up, weren't it? You either you either accept hold a grudge, yeah, accept it or hold a grudge. It, it, it's simple as that. Do you know what I mean? It's not. There's no mid mid ground with that. We all do so, respect as well. You're, you're Bolton, right? And you 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 need your best players, don't you? Do you know what I mean? If if it happened at Manchester City now. I don't think it would, but they've got other players to come in. Mm. I don't imagine at Bolton at that time you had another Elias Jew. No, we had no one to bring in. It was, you know what I mean? It was, he was the main focus. He was the first team on the uh, first name on the team sheet basically mm. because he, what he could do in a game. And the, were you his wingman? With what? Were you his wingman? Would, would you go? No, out with no. Jufu was too wild for me. He was. He was, and he admitted himself. He was. Uh, he'd go out to retreat on a, you know, on a on a Sunday at one o'clock in the afternoon and just stay there and then end up in Manchester till three o'clock in the morning. Do you know what I mean? He was that type of guy. He'd be getting a bottle of champagne and having a glass and then giving everyone else a glass and then get another bottle. So he'd be having like a glass every... He's not stupid, do you yeah. know what I mean? He'd be having a glass every... You know I mean? hour. I glass it's a fucking guy. expensive glass <laughs> of champagne. Oh, yeah, it's expensive, but he's not stupid, yeah. <laughs> if I go out at one o'clock by seven o'clock, I, I can't fucking speak. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, no, he's not like that. He, yeah, he could pay... He could, he could so definitely were, pay were more, He just wanted to be out and about. Yes, and he wanted to be so, He couldn't stay in. Yeah. It was... Um, but, you know, some lads are sociable and some lads aren't, do you know what I mean? Some lads are proper, proper family, family guys, and which is great, do you know what I mean? But some lads are just... Not that he weren't a family guy, of course he was a family guy, but when he was a, when he wanted to go out, he'd go out. Mm. Who was in your battalion then? What was your uh squad? there was me, the Brit Pack really, me, Kevin Davis, Kevin Nolan. The Brit Pack. The Brit Pack. We used to call ourselves the Brit Pack. Uh, Gary Megson uh, we'll talk about uh 
Mr. Megson uh, shortly. But he, he used to have a F Troop, he used to be called F Troop. So there was all the English lads basically. So it was me, even the members of staff used to come out with us sometimes on away trip, uh, not on away trips, on um, pre season tours or nights out that we'd organise in Manchester or London or wherever. They all used to come out with us, all the English staff, because we just wanted to create a massive, you know, we didn't want to divide basically. So we wanted to create a big family, a family club, even though Sam had gone. Do you know what I mean? And Gary had come in and Sammy Lee had gone. We still wanted to create that that family vibe and it, I thought it was it worked really, really well. That's a good idea to get, get togetherness, isn't it? Go out, get out with the English lads and leave the foreigners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking totally. A lot of the foreigners didn't want to come out, you see. A lot, yeah. a lot of them didn't want to, they just wanted to do their own thing and they go to bed after <laughs> after evening meal. But obviously, us Brits, we just fucking love boozing, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> So we just wanted to go out all the time, so we did, you know. Because you always like going out from the start. Yeah, I think work, work hard, play hard, Tuesday, do you know what I mean? Tuesday, like, Wednesday? Oh, no, uh, the odd Tuesday, yeah, but for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it'd be, it'd be a no-go, especially for oh, me especially, but... Millhouse on a Tuesday. Millhouse on a Tuesday, yeah. yeah. You just went bar. Did you? Yeah, you're in every Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> you were lying, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, and I bet I didn't fucking pay for it. You? <laughs> you didn't fucking tip at all, huh? <laughs> yeah, so Mill did you want to choose it? Well, not again, man. <laughs> well, I worked in Milan and you were there every fucking choosed it. Fart fail. <laughs> hey, what a place that was. It was yeah. fucking brilliant. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you're, hey, great. you're not watching that game, you lined that up well. Yeah, you did, yeah. You lined Fucking that up well. Yeah, you did. Fucking brilliant. But it must have been mad, you know, because you, obviously you were there in the promotion season. Yeah. Bolton lad, you, you, you're, in the, you're in the team and everything, and then all these big hitters start coming in. You know, to, you're Jock Ebbs, World Cup winners, a Koccha, your Campo, your Euros. And, you know, the, to out, but now but you're at your, your local club and now you've got these... International world stars around you. We're, we're, we're Sam treating everyone the same, or yeah, uh, massively was treating everyone the same. He didn't, he didn't, um, you know, create an atmosphere where you thought, fuck, you know, I can't sit next to him. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I think sometimes now, when when say say Messi goes to PSG, right, there'll be certain players in the PSG dressing room that will think, fuck, you know, can I can I go over and talk to him? Can I, do you know what I mean? There'll be an awe of him. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Whereas Sam didn't really create that with us. Obviously, we were in awe, I was in awe of Jorky, of a Cocha Campo, yeah, of course I was. But he brought everyone together, meal time, breakfast, everyone had to come in for breakfast, so you all sat together, do you know what I mean? It, it was, a, 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 I keep going back to the family, it was, it was proper group, you know, family, proper, it was intimate, do you know what I mean? Because it was, you weren't scared of saying boot or goose. You weren't saying scared of being a 17 year old lad, even after me, when I, when say I was 23, 24 and 17, 18 year old lads were coming through, they'd still be in the same mold as you can go and sit next to a cot, you can go and sit next to you go and sit next to an Elka, not a problem. And they'll, they will speak to you, but you know, they'll, they'll give you the time of day and they'll ask you how you are and stuff. Whereas now, maybe, I don't know, but maybe you don't get that as much mm. because... Fucking, I forgot an Elka. Yeah, that? what an was he like? Yeah. Oh, an Elka, was, he, was, he was top man. Who top, was, was, was the toppest man out of them big hitters who you could felt like you could just have a talk with? Yeah, he was the most down-to-earth guy. That was uh, Spanish Senera? Yeah, yeah, Real Madrid, yeah. You'd probably ever, ever, ever meet in your life. Did you be able to get him on for us, or...? <laughs> oh, yeah, come on, yeah. <laughs> i get Camp on FaceTime. You <laughs> I'm going to see Nivan up in October. Uh, he's in Palmer, so we're going, going to go over three of my mates and just go over and see him. And, uh, but yeah, I keep in touch with quite a lot of them, to be fair, which is great. Yeah, um, yeah but it's, yeah, them times of... He was probably the was. biggest hitter out of a lot of them as well, wasn't he? Yeah, he'd, he'd, he'd done everything. Like, he, won, he won the World Cup with Spain, I think, European Championships, La Liga. He, he's just His career was just like unprecedented. And for Sam to get him... But I was about to ask that question. How, and again, total respect to Bolton, how did Bolton get them players? Really, like, really? You know, the biggest one, I think, was it Sam used to fly over to meet them personally, wherever they were. So I think we signed a coach from PSG. So I think he went over to France, to Paris, and met him personally. Did the same with York AF, did the same with Iero, did the same with Campo, same with Stelios. 
Same with an Elka. He used to he used to just fly over and say, "I'm like eating." So you make him feel three warm. days away. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fucking yeah. 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 man. Crazy so Monday. That's what he used to. Long weekend. Long weekend. So, I'm not gonna be in there. I'm not gonna be for the next four days. I'm gonna go to uh, Madrid, to Spain, to <laughs> somewhere. Just fucking sat there tanked up. Of course it is. But I think as a player, the more personal it is with you and the manager, or you and the chairman, the more you want to go to that club. So you think that that, that, that I think I think that was a major make major, him feel wanted. Yeah, I think so because who went, else? They weren't all. Who else is going to fucking come to Bolton? No, do you know what I mean? No I, offense I, to Bolton. I, 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 I'll come today, and I don't fucking like. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like them, them, they're not fucking 34, 36, Done other. They're like they've still got a lot of the career to go. Honestly, it, it was bizarre. Like we, we used to find out in the papers us. We didn't used to find out in the. We used to find out in the papers that there was a rumor, and then literally the next day the player would turn up. I've just seen mad. fucking JJ Cotter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, honestly, it, 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 it was crazy. crazy. What's, what, what's that second player with his bones? <laughs> oh, John Shaw. I've just seen fucking a culture in John Shaw. What is going on down there? No, it can't be. I'm telling you, he's no, playing Saturday. I'm telling you. He's, he's playing Saturday. He's, he's I'm fucking, fucking telling, telling you. you. Don't get him on in a culture first goal. He's playing Saturday at the That's how it was, seriously. We just, we just, could, they just turn up, like, and you think, fuck me. Honestly, it, it'd be mad, uh, madness, honestly. And what were the, like, disparity in wages then between... Uh, say I don't know say Kev. yeah say Kev yeah. Or probably one of the most important players in Bolton team at that time yeah to a Koch or an Elka or Joe Kev I don't know I don't know do into figures no but... numbers but yeah there, uh, there was but I think there was in every team in, in the era that I was playing Premier League from 2003 to 2010 there was a gap there was a big big gap you had your top players on X amount and then you had a group that which were on X amount, and then you had a group which were on the lowest, yeah, the lowest amount sort of thing. And it was just, it weren't necessarily on age really. It was just on, you know, um, how important you were to the. I know it sounds like sh- sh- shite that, but how important you were to the squad, yeah. and that's how you got paid. But I suppose that's what it's like in jobs now. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah. like in I, it, it, how valuable you are to the company, you get you yeah. get paid more, mm-hmm. and you know if you're. Not but that it sounds valuable. like that Sam had, got, had, had built that atmosphere where you weren't that bothered. We weren't because no one, we never, never, I, honestly, we never talked about money once. Like, not once did anyone ever talk about We didn't have the players that were like massive time and, and always like talked about money and came in in loads of flash cars and all that malarkey. We didn't have that type of squad. You know, I love my cars and that in my day, but. And JJ did, he had about six for hours, but... Juicy, <laughs> Juicy as well, surely. And Juicy, yeah, and McLaren's in the car. Six now, but we weren't, we weren't, we weren't. Trust me, we weren't, but we weren't like that. I've had you play the PlayStation 2 in it. <laughs> Not a PS1. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a 306, now 106. <laughs> but yeah, we but it, it is what it is, you know. A coach had had his career, Giorg had had his career, and then Elk had his career, and they could buy what they wanted. So they, they drove what they wanted and you know what I mean? It, it was, but they, we never thought, fuck, look at that big time bastard there yeah. coming in. And that. We, we never once thought that. And I just thought the whole atmosphere for them six, seven years was was top draw. What's Stig Tofton like? <laughs> Stig Tofton, what a guy. Is that what you always bring up that? Yeah. He was an animal. Absolute nutter. Animal. He had a, a apartment in Eagley Mills, right? Eagley Mills is a big apartment block in Bolton. And they used to have parties there quite often because he's Danish and he, he was just, he, he'd been in jail and all that, I think, stick to him. Covered in tattoos. Oh he, my his God. His dad he, killed his mum in front of him. I think and so. And then yeah. killed himself. Yeah, I think so. And he joined Els Angels and yes, stuff he really did, young. Yeah, a big, a big biker gang in <clears> the yeah, yeah. yeah, he joined them. So he was, he was mental. Like, he used to have these parties at his house. I think I went to one and he, it was just like, he had a penthouse apartment in Eagley Mills and it was just like, there was people there that, it was like a, it, it was like a fancy dress party. Like there was people there, long hair, short hair, tall, small, different races, different you know ethnicities and stuff like that. It was just like you're just walking into something from a movie. Do you know what I mean? Like a, a, a movie set or something like that. You had Josephine set to go the dream coat there. You had a footballer <laughs> there. You had another footballer there. You had share there, Schneider Twitter. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it, it, honestly, it, you looked at him and you just, they were like... What's he playing? What's he playing? Bolton Arena? <laughs> <laughs> honestly, it was, it was mad. It's, the parties he had were mental. Like, 
mental, mental. Where did he pick, picked all these? I don't know where he got them from. He either knew them from Denmark and flew them over, or they were friends of his that he made here, but they were like, not hippies, but they were like, honestly, it was mental. It was it's a strange character. Strange character just knocking about. You're going to, you wait for the toilet and someone will come out and you'd think, <laughs> What? Where the fuck have you come from? You know what I mean? like, <laughs> how does Stig know you? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what you think, and you think, oh, you know. But honestly, I think. How I, does Stig know yeah, you? Yeah, seriously, like, it, honestly, yeah. But he was, he was a, a mental case. Did you see many much fighting in that squad? Uh, yes. Yeah, there was a couple. There was. One really early doors, which was uh, Bernard Mendy and Akin Bulent. Bernard Mendy, French right back international. Akin Bulent, Turkish international. Don't know what had gone on, but I, we we I was only about sixteen, seventeen, and we I think we just finished training. And the first team was still training, so we were like getting ready to get all the boots in and that, and 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 it was right at the end of the session, and we was in like the the it was all port cabins at the time. So on the on the on the field, we seen something going on. Uh, people like pushing each other, and then it just got broke up. And then everyone went the, the way it came in. And then these two just went smash, punches, punches, grabbing heads, head butting, literally like the wor one of the worst fights I've seen. Like blood everywhere. Like everyone yeah. dragging them off and that. And then so the, everyone dragged them off. And then uh, Sam gets them into the office. He, he sits them both down. He says. What's your, what's your problem, you two? So that, uh, he's speaking in French, Mendy. I can be like speaking Turkish. I think <laughs> can we get a translator over here? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <sake>. yeah, Phil! <laughs> yeah. Phil! <laughs> I need you, Phil. <laughs> so in the end, I think he just said, right, you two, end of story. Fucking get out there, have it out, and we'll fucking end the story. So they went back out, had it out, had it out on training ground, and then left it and I, we were all like 16, 17 and we were thinking, blood everywhere and we were thinking, <laughs> do we really want to get in the fucking first team? <laughs> this, this is what's fucking going to go on. Fucking hell, just have it out. Have it out. Because we've heard he said, like, we've heard boxing gloves. Yeah. Oh no, he Sorted said, out. This he, is said, just he said, fucking get outside. Street he said, have it out, do what you want and end off and act to be fair to him, they battered each other and end off after that, shook each other's hand, high five in each other. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it, was one the, it was one of the uh, I think Mendy, Mendy beat, but Bulent, psych, he looked like a psychopath, like Turkish psychopath, you know, like a, uh, he owned a shop, like, you know what I mean? And, and said, if you fucking spilt chilli sauce on his fucking counter, you fucking get a fucking whack round. <laughs> <laughs> one of them fucking psychos. <laughs> one of them people. So, uh, yeah, honestly, <laughs> mate, fucking not right in the head, seriously not right. But honestly, after it, shook hands, shower off. Never heard a fucking peep out of him again. Did you stick around for the... Second, return second round. Oh, yeah. return I was hoping for a fucking return leg, but the fucking <laughs> weren't one coming. Fucking, I think Bulen, Bulen got transferred about a month after, uh, and Mendy went at the end of the season. Never see anything like that again. Ever. Oh, gee, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever. I think that's the first time I've ever heard yeah. the manager go right. Fuck it, one two to tap. Yeah, but that was the only way. That was the, the only way. To be fair, it was the only way to deal with it because they were they were still like you know like riled in the chair like, yeah. pff, just go out and do it and then go on. And then if I, basically, if I ever hear anything, if that ever happens again, you're both fucking off, basically. You're both out of the, out of the club. That's fucking <laughs> That's sensational. It, it is, isn't it? That's, that's one of the best, it's one of the best ways to do it, isn't it, really? I, did, did Gary Speed have a go with, was it mate? Oh, mate Gary Speed, well. oh, mate, what a guy he is, Gary Speed. Um, so, yeah, we was in Partizan Belgrade um, away in the uh, UEFA Cup. It was the night before, and me and... My best mate Guy Megson had just had just gone to uh, having it do the interview for the for the night before with all the press and stuff. So we we came, we walked back, and then we got onto training. Like they'd already started training, and literally just after the warm up, we were in like possession or something like that. And we we walked down, me and Gary Megson, and just seeing Gary Speed and Abdullah Mati, fist, 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 and we're like, whoa, 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 what's going on? So anyway, at the end of the day, like Gary, I think Gary Speed's. Maybe he had a bit of beef with Abdullah Mate about something about I don't know about his playing style or something like that. So he must have, he must have passed him a ball or something and said something to him like miscontrol and said fucking. You know. So Abby just flipped and just like gone for Speedo. Speedo's gone for him and it's just been like 
not blood, but just like chaos, like punching, punching, night punching. Before you were night playing. before, played Partizan Belgrade and Gavin McCann scored the winner. Yeah. We won 1-0. Gavin, Mc... Gavin McCann scored the winner. It was the night before. Did they both play? Game. Yeah, they both played. They just both got bandages on. Fuck, <laughs> 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 it like, looked like fucking like, uh, Mark Wright, but just before the game started. <laughs> bandages on, claret down your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, madness. So we'd literally just come back from the interview and they were just at it and we're thinking... Uh, Gary Megson looked at his watch, he said, it's only fucking half past eight. What, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> honestly, like, uh, but Gary Speed was... Honestly, he's one of the, the best pros that I've ever, ever played with. Yeah. What, was, what age have you been here? Gary Speed all signed for us when he was 34, I think he was. So he must have been about 35, was he 35? He still Dolomay, ran was, the show, didn't he? Oh, he was... Pristine. Incredible. He was fit. He was. He could run all day. He was strong. He just didn't have the 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 pace. And do you know what I mean? But you didn't need it. Where, the way we played with with a three, you just needed to graft. Mm. And he unbelievable to set pieces for and against. Do you know what I mean? He could whip a ball in. He could get on the end of a cross. He was he was a fantastic pro uh, mm. to play with. He was up there with the air roll, To be fair, he was up there with like a a, a genuine genuine pro, genuine guy. Before before Sam left and Megson coming in, did, I heard rumours. Did you were there Liverpool in fear? Yeah, Remember? well, yeah. I think Sam brought me into his office. It was afternoon or morning. He said, "There's been an inquiry about you," and I was like, "Right." He he never told me the club. He just said, "There's been an inquiry about you, uh, but we've dismissed it because we want you here." And I was like, "Right." And then I found out a couple of two three years later that it was it was Liverpool that made the inquiry. But I know why, because I scored against him in my debut season. Yeah. And I, every time we played, we played him like four, four, obviously playing four times in two years. And I had probably my best games against him. Up against Bellamy, Kewell. Um, who, else, who else was there? Bellamy, Kewell. I can't remember. They had like three or four wingers that used to swap sides and stuff. And I used to have like some of my best games against them. And uh, I think Rafa Benitez was the manager at the time. And... Apparently they made an inquiry and just just to see how much I was worth or see how much they wanted for me. And he said, just don't. He said, whatever you hear, don't take it on because it's not happening. So you're yeah, here. And so I was I was buzzing with that. I was buzzing that he wanted me. I was buzzing that I was. So that was a positive in itself. Just you being told. Yeah. Listen, whoever's coming in, it's not happening. Yeah. You're here and you. Yeah. But do you not think you know like if there would have met a bit, it would have been your team that you supported and all that. Would you think you'd have been like, no, fucking hell, it's Liverpool. <laughs> I think everyone would have been, do you know yeah. what I mean? But I don't know, because I was, I was probably only 19, 20 then, and it, it may, I don't know, maybe for, for my career, it might not have been the best bet to go to Liverpool at 20. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy, that, that that sounds mental, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe, maybe it was the best thing that I did, staying at Bolton for nine years, what I did. Um, because, you know, I might have just gone down by the way. It sounds stupid, but I might have gone down by the way. So if it's like for Liverpool, massive club, you know, 45,000 every week, 50,000 every week. And there's a massive, massive amount of pressure. Not saying there wasn't any pressure for Bolton, but if I had signed for Liverpool, there would have been a inc- like might have got lost tenfold. A yes. Yeah. yeah. It could have been tenfold pressure and I could have just gone down by the wayside mm-hmm. after two years gone. And then where do you go from there? Like you played three games in two years and it's just one of them, one yeah. of them thing. So, but, so Sam leaves, obviously. Gary Megson comes in. Did Sam get sacked or did he leave? He left for Newcastle, didn't he? Right. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a bit of uh, politics going on upstairs yeah, right. in the, in the uh, boardroom, uh, and they went to Newcastle, didn't he? Is, is there a a big change, a big shift? Because I mean, what were it like? Because I remember when Megson's first game, and Gary Megson, you're a wanker from Bolton fans. Really? Well, there was a, yeah, there was a massive like. Is that because it was Sam or yeah. left? I think so. We, we, so it could have been. We got to be Pep Guardiola. Got to you ever Sam. Sam had t- what six position? I think highest. Fifth, I think we did. Fifth. We finished fifth, 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 seventh, seventh, and eighth. I think we finished in fourth. You were for cup, I think. Yeah, the, twice. Yeah. The fans expected after Sam that they might bring somebody a bit bigger than Gary Megson in. Mm. And Probably rightly so as well. I think. Yeah, because yeah. it was it West Brom's job, uh, yeah. job previous. Yeah, yeah. Didn't really well, he, do he that kept that going up and down with West yeah. Brom. He kept getting promoted, then staying in Premier League, and then getting relegated, and then he'd leave and they'd come back. Do you know what I mean? He was. Yeah. He was uh, renowned for. Relega- your, your. Yeah, relegation and, and escaping relegation, keeping teams up or getting them promoted. And when you're, in, when you're established in the Premier League after five, six years, that's not really the appointment that yeah. everyone was looking for, really. Do you know, mm. if you think back, were the fans getting onto them about this style of player? Even though you were doing so well, 
Probably, yeah, probably because. But we had Kevin Davis, like he yeah. was um he was our stalwart. He was like you know he scored like. 10, 15 goals every season that he'd been there, like every two, three, four seasons. So you had to, play, you had to play that way. Yeah. Or he, or he also said well, yeah, too. like until we brought an Elker in and then Kevin Davis went on the right, that was your mainstay. Obviously, you could go in behind then because he'd run in behind an Elker. You could play the killer passes in behind, but before that, but it was effective. Like we'd bully teams at the Reebok, we'd bully Arsenal, we'd bully Chelsea, we'd bully anyone at home. And even away, we'd, our, our style of football, they weren't used to it. Like, mm. you know, they, they used to be trying to pass people off the park. We'd press them from the front and it'd be a completely different game for everyone when we came into town. A bit um, like Stoke were. Under, yeah. Under Pulis. Yeah. But they had like, obviously, Dlap and they were just, they were, they had, they just launched everything in the box. Mm. But they had like players that could finish Crouchy Fuller, players that could actually yeah. like put the ball in the back of that and stuff. And it was different. It, it's completely different. <clears throat> so when Sam's gone to Newcastle, you're thinking, there's a chance he's going to come in for me here. Or did he speak to you about that? No, no, I, I think, I think, I'm not saying everyone thought that, but you know. <laughs> Whole squad. Yeah, do you know what I mean? But it, Newcastle, Looking massive club, they're getting 60,000 people in every week and you're thinking, who's he going to take, basically? Yeah. Do you know, who's he going to come in for, who's he going to take? But I think there was a, a, a thing in his contract where after, I think it was either 12 months or 18 months, he couldn't take a player and he didn't. Do you know what I mean? Because we played Newcastle on the opening day of the season after he left. Yeah. When Sammy Lee was managing, we got battered 3-1. Oberfemi Martin scored two, scored an overhead kick at the bar and went in. And it was just like a bit of a downhill slope from there. And then Megson came in in like the October, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, and he was, it obviously, he was not the fans' favourite, obviously. Uh, but he had a job to do. And he, in, to be fair to him, he, he wanted players in that he wanted players in. So... But I'd just signed a new four-year deal. I'd just literally just signed a four-year deal in that August. And he bought Greg Steinson in, in the November or something like that. And I was thinking, you just brought a right back in my... So I played like, I played like the first three or four games under him. And then he dropped me for Steinson. But he brought him in. So I was like, look, I'll fight for my place and stuff like that. But I was registered for every European game where Steinson wasn't. So it was mad for me because I played every... I, might not have been, the, was it the first season? It might have been the second season after. I was still registered and Steinson wasn't. So I played every, I never played a Premier League game, I think. I think I was on the bench for every Premier League game. But I played every European game, every UEFA Cup game. And we got to the quarters, we got beat by Sporting Lisbon away. Got beat 1-0, but I played every single game. And it was like, so I had to keep myself fit because I weren't playing Premier League football. So I had to play resis, keep myself fit, and do my extra training and stuff just to be ready for these European for the games. For the, for the cup, the, the European Cup game. Yeah, for the UEFA Cup ones, and it was. It, it, but we like we beat Athletic Madrid home and away. It was like that season was madness because yeah. we had a group, we had loads of group games, fine, and then we we played Athletic Madrid. Aguero got sent off at Reebok for telling linesmen to fuck off in Spanish or something like that. <laughs> and then we went, went to their place, drew nil-nil, went through. So we drew, I think we drew nil-nil at home uh, to Sport and Lisbon. Or, yeah, it might have been nil at home to Sport and Lisbon, then lost one nil away. And then we went out. But that was our biggest chance. You must have been good to do that referee and did a B-Tech in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 got, he's got a coach after him, though. How the fuck does that, <laughs> how the fuck does that German referee you know that I've just told him to fuck off <laughs> in Argentina? <laughs> how the fuck? Straight away, though, when he fetches Greta Steinson and you're thinking, he's a fucking prick, this, isn't he? Of course you do, you know, as a player, of course you do. If, if anyone's like yourself, if, 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 if someone brought a striker in and you were, you were played every... I, I played, I must have played 75%, 8% of the games in the previous three or four seasons. So it's not like I was a bit part player or anything like that. Mm. So you're thinking to yourself, and I just signed a new deal, which I was, you know, loved it, my hometown club and stuff like that. And then you get to a point where he's bringing another right back in and you're thinking... One, what have I done? He's not even seen me play and he's brought, do you know what I mean? Mm, he's seen me play two games right. or something. Um, but yeah, that's, that's just football. It happens all the time, I think. Did he completely fuck you off in terms yeah, of... Yeah, completely. Like I was just on the bench, uh, never really came on, um, on the bench. right back's a position, if you're playing right back, you're not you don't really on. come on, do you? No, you yeah. don't. You don't really come off, do you? you, you, yeah. you, you your full back's really, really. like, It's not like your right wing or your left wing or your no. striker. Fresh legs. No. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. You have, if you're having a bad game, you're having a bad game, you can deal with it. If you're having a good game, great. Do you know what I mean? You, you're assisting goals or scoring them, do you know what I mean? But yeah, it was, it, was, it was tough for me, that, because I'd just gone from playing the majority of games to just being sat on a bench, and I didn't like that at all. Because mm. we've heard it before saying... with him. We've heard it before with Megson, where... You know, he's saying you're still involved, you're still on the bench. We've heard stories about him just completely 
fucking these lads off. And oh yeah, that, happened, with that happened after. That happened just before he got the sack. That so I was I was training with the um, reserves permanently. Me, Danny Shitu, um, Riga, Mustafa Riga. Uh, there's about five or six of us just permanently training with the reserves with Alan Cork. He was a great coach, uh, Corky. Just used to train with them every day. Never used to train with the first team, and that was just before he got the sack. He just wanted you out. Yeah, just basically, but. We had like two, three, and not, we're not talking about money here. We're talking about we had two, three year deals, but we wanted to, we knew how valuable we were to the club. Like, we knew we weren't shit players. We knew we weren't just like there for squad players. We knew we wanted to, we wanted to get in that first team and, and knock people out of their positions. It wasn't like we were just sat there picking up the money. I left Bolton when I had a year left on my deal. I could have just weighed it out for another year, but I didn't. So I just wanted to go and play football.